Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my ultimate player progression guide, going through everything dev trades, player progression, caps, etc., skill points, everything you need to know about player progression. So make sure you stay tuned to the end so you can get it all together and put together exactly what you need to grow your team to 99. And as always, if you haven't already, make sure you give this a big thumbs up. Every like helps this video grow and helps the channel grow. So I greatly appreciate it. As soon as you're seeing this video right now, please like the video, subscribe if you're new. We're on the road to 30K, hopefully one day 100K, but set, let's set the bar low for now. Let's get to 30K. And of course, if you guys need any help, comment down below and or DM me on Twitter. You can send me your favorite your favorite rebuild, your dynasties, whatever you're working on, send it to me over on Twitter and follow me over there. And of course, if you haven't, check out Underdog. My link will be down below in the description. Sign up now so you can get ready and have your bonus all ready to go for when the college football season starts and the NFL season starts. All right, so let's go through player progression. There's so much to talk about. There's so many questions. People don't get it. I'm going to go through everything. So come on over to roster. That's where you're going to look at everything. Everyone keeps asking me how to see all this. Go over to roster and you want to click Y and or triangle if you're on PlayStation when you get to this roster spot. This is, there's so much to go through. So let's start with the first thing. What is player progression? Player progression is growing your players for anyone that doesn't know. So when you get these recruits, they come in anywhere between a 50 and a 70 to 80 overall. These players will grow throughout their collegiate career. And there's so many ways to go about, go about player progression, how to do this. So let's start with the first and foremost, the biggest thing to note when going to a player. So let's start with my favorite guy, Jelani Watkins, wide receiver, 72 overall when assessing i like to assess freshmen for growth so keep in mind when i'm doing this so like when you when you get a new rec recruiting class you pick a new team always check out your freshmen and start there because that's really going to be the, the the future of your team so go to johnny Watkins, click y under triangle so the first thing to take note when doing player progression is going to be the development trait let me explain what development trait means a lot of people think that the development trait is the end-all be-all i had an elite guy he didn't grow why is that i had a star guy he grew a lot why is that I had a normal guy, he grew, why is that? I'm gonna go through all this now. So star dev trait, read it. It says it. development develops faster than impact rate. So development is how quickly they accrue XP, how quickly they can level up when doing so, right? So let's say you're a normal dev and you get, you may need 10,000 XP to get a skill point. A star dev guy needs only 7,500. A elite guy may only need 4,000, right? That's the point. So these guys can quickly accrue skill points. A lot of people were telling me, hey, I had this elite player and he barely grew and he, he the off season came and the big jump happened, didn't work. So the off season jump seems to be unrelated from the dev trade in that sense, right? The off season jump seems to be mainly based on a few other factors, which I will get into. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But let's start with the, let's start with the dev trade, right? That's just for XP. They develop faster. While I do think it does play a role in their overall career growth, Keep in mind that the XP is a big part of that. Now, if you see in the top right corner, we have skill points. So accrue skill points below the 72 overall, there's that grayed out bar. That bar as it fills gets you skill points. How do you get skill points? When playing in games, touchdowns, yards, Heisman, Offensive Player of the Year, Wide Receiver of the Year, all those awards give you XP. So that's why sometimes people don't realize this, when you have a big season with players and they have all these skill points and the end of the season comes and they get this big jump, sometimes it's from all those skill points. Keep in mind, skill points upgrade automatically. You can't manually do it. So if you come over here, you'll see three skill points for route running, three skill points for hands, six for elusiveness. As you get higher in the tiers, it will start to cost a little bit more. And it also depends on which one it is, like quickness right here to maximize the speed and everything is 13. So these are automatic. You can't control it. But what you can do is play well with these players and get them more skill points. People were thinking that you had to just play well with them and they would just get the big jump. Not necessarily. You're trying to accrue skill points, which then go back here. Also keep in mind, abilities are upgraded with points. So sometimes people have a great season and they're saying to me, hold up, I had a great season and I barely went up in overall. Yeah, you may, they, then you look at their, you look at their abilities. They may have jumped up in a bunch of abilities. They may have jumped up in a spot that you can't tell like IQ. So take a look at all those things too, as well. And check your skill points sporadically after each week, check their, their, their yellow bar, see how that's going up. You'll notice very quickly. If you have a great season with this guy Watkins and you don't do much with a backer, you'll notice quickly how that bar's filling up and the other guy's not. So that's the first aspect. Your dev trait impacts the XP you get and the way you accrue it and the way you level up. That's how you get those extra skill points, which go a long way in blowing your guy up and doing really well with them. Now, furthermore, is the stat caps. So those grayed out bars are your stat caps. I cannot stress enough. I made a whole video going over stat caps. So if you haven't checked it out, check that out as well. That's all in depth, but this is going to be the all encompassing video. Stat caps are so important. So those grayed out boxes with the cut through them is pretty much their cap. So route running, he can get almost near the top. 
The way I like to look at this is when it's open like this, see how there's all blacked out bars, you can go all the way. This guy can be a maxed out receiver as a catcher. Elusiveness, he can be a maxed out elusive guy. Power, he will not be anywhere near strong. In my eyes, when you have one stat cap, you pretty much can get to the mid high 90s on that. When you have two stat caps, low 90s. When you have three or more, you're talking 80s at the highest, right? Once you get to that three, you're talking 80s at the highest and so on and so forth. So these stat caps are going to decide the player's ceiling. So this is the next part of this video. A lot of people are commenting. I have a guy, I have this normal dev guy, or I have this three-star gem. I played really well with him. He maxed out in 83 overall. He had a, he had star dev, right? Maybe he had star dev. Why, why, why did he max out? That's simple. Had you checked your player, sometimes, I'm gonna go to another team for this because I have some better examples. LSU has some higher tier players. I do believe the stars play a role in their ceiling, so keep that in mind. Some people are saying like, oh, I, you know, I like two-star gems, but you'll realize very quickly getting to those top tiers are a little bit harder. So for instance, if you go to cornerback for Marshall, this first guy right here, Foster, he's a two-star player. He's a normal dev player. Look at all these stat caps he has. His zone coverage will never be higher than a 90 probably. His hands will never be higher than a 70. His man coverage will cap at the low 80s. His run stopping will cap in like the mid to low 80s or 70s really, right? All together with tackle. So when you look at all these things, you realize this guy's never going to be a 90 overall guy. He's just not. So now you might say, flip this on its head. Foster has elite dev. Okay, he's an elite player, but you have to check his stat caps because he can, he could be an elite player. Elite technically means he can just reach his ceiling higher. Star means they can reach their ceiling higher. So something Madden doesn't have, Madden doesn't have a ceiling. Essentially what it does is your dev determines how quickly you're gonna grow with no ceiling. This game has a ceiling involved. So players have a way that they're gonna be able to be built. Like this guy will be an okay zone, an okay man corner, and that is it. That is it. You may have a guy that has no caps on man, but a lot of caps in zone. He's a man corner and so on and so forth. So you gotta be checking out these caps because you'll quickly realize that some players are just gonna be what, what they're gonna be. And there's nothing you can do about that. You take a look at this freshman quarterback, Jaquai Long on Marshall. And if you look, he's a one-star player with normal dev. His caps, his power, his throw power will never be insanely high. His accuracy will be solid, but not amazing. His IQ will always be low, which is gonna hold his overall down. His quickness will be okay. This guy could probably get into like an 85, 86 range, but he'll never be a 90. Now, if you had said he had elite dev, you're probably wondering he's elite. How, how is that possible? Of course, this one's normal, but those are just the, the, the situations I'm seeing a lot of people asking is, how is a two-star player with elite and a green gem, how is he not getting to his 99 spot? And that's part of the reason I've talked about, like some people are like, oh, I prefer a green gem two-star over a five-star. It's not always true because the five stars first, they start at 79 overall, 75 overall in that little range, right? If a five-star that starts at 78 overall also have no stat caps, you're talking about a guy that could be a 99. Now, if you have a 60 overall guy who's a two-star with some stat caps, they'll never be in the 90s. So keep that in mind, the ceiling does matter. Let's go to a guy like Caleb Durham, Caden Durham, sorry. He's a four-star player with star dev. He's going to accrue pretty fast. If you look, his stat caps are pretty great. Keep in mind with this too, stat caps also are per position. Some things won't impact the players overall that much. For instance, IQ is not going to matter much for a running back, although it does matter for their overall. So keep that in mind with the position. But on the flip side, route running is not gonna matter too much. Okay, he has a cap there. Doesn't really matter. I don't care about his route running too much. It's not gonna be the end all be all as long as he can do other things. His power, his quickness. What matters for an, he's an elusive back. His elusiveness can be maxed. His hands can be maxed. His route running can't be. He can, his hands are great. His looseness are great. His route running's fine. He's not a receiver. And his quickness can be maxed. As an elusive back, his overall potential is insanely high. He can easily get like a 94, 95 overall because all he has caps on are on things that aren't gonna impact his overall too much. And he has star dev. These are the guys that you wanna be prioritizing when progressing players. Players that have good dev, players that have good stack caps, and players that have pretty high starting overalls as freshmen. So now getting to the next part of this, the year matters as well. The biggest jumps that I've seen is freshman year and then sophomore to junior. After that, you're not really seeing huge jumps anymore. So understand that those are the biggest years to jump. So as a 60 overall player, potentially, with maybe elite dev and a freshman, but low caps, yeah, you might get that big jump to 70, but that was your big jump. And then as a sophomore, you might get your next big jump, 80. That's it. You're now a junior at 80 overall. So those two stars are capped. So keep that all in mind. What I recommend when progressing players, go through your roster and start the guys that have large caps with high dev traits. Those are the guys that I recommend starting. So if they're elite dev or star dev and they have almost no caps or maybe one at the end, like you see with this guy right here, barely anything. These are the guys that have maximum potential. These are the guys that you see with the yellow bar filling at the top that can get up and keep increasing. These are the guys you wanna, you wanna prioritize. 
So I hope this does help you guys kind of understand that better. I feel like this was really confusing for a lot of people on how player progression worked, but it's all circumstantial per player. One last example here, this guy's impact dev. Okay, his ratings, he only has a few caps. He's not bad. His ceiling's actually okay. He's a running back. His elusiveness can get pretty high. His quickness can get pretty high. His power can be pretty high. This guy has a pretty good ceiling, but he only has impact dev. What that tells you is that while he can have a pretty high ceiling, he's not going to accrue XP that quickly. So you're going to have to pretty much pray for a big offseason jump, which is the next part of player progression. As you guys know, when you, when you advance to the offseason, there's a week called training week and your players progress, which I'm going to go through now. So players like that, you're basically relying on an offseason week right? You're relying on a big training week upgrade. Players with high dev trait and high ceilings, you're trying to play with them. And that's the big misconception that people aren't getting. I've seen so many people say, I got all these awards and this is wrong. And that's just not the case. It's because you're doing it with a player that may have impact dev trait. You're doing it with a player with a normal dev trait with low ceiling caps. You have to have big ceiling gaps, big ceiling caps, and you want to have a good dev trait to be able to succeed in that, in that aspect. So the next thing is coming over to coach abilities. And this is something that a lot of people don't know as well, or maybe haven't really noticed. Motivator is good at strong player development. If you look through this, this is another way to get it. So if you look at the put in the work, players get an off season training boost. This will be another way to maximize that. So let's say you want to be doing this, in my opinion, for positions that have a lot of quantity, like a secondary, like an O-line, like a linebacker. Positions that you have a lot of players at, like you have multiple linebackers, you have multiple DBs, quarterbacks, you're only starting one, right? This is a good way to maximize your O-line. Let's say you have a bunch of O-line with good dev traits and they have... They have good caps, they have good everything. You get that put in the work one. And now when the off season training boost comes out, you'll make sure you get a bigger boost. So that's how you increase that chance. A lot of people have said that too. I'm not getting many training boosts. That's because you may not have all your packages on top of some other factors. And that's going to lower your ceiling when doing that. Next, we want to look at, which is a little out of place a little bit here, but as you guys see under architect, which is pretty interesting, quarterbacks earn additional XP for in-game goals. I like this one. And this is where I was telling people where they were saying the whole XP thing doesn't work. That's not the case because you could see it. You could read, you could read the, the copy here and see it. You earn additional XP. So if you do want to go ahead and also build this, let's say for like Durham, I may want to buy that package year one, running backs on additional XP. That way by his junior year, I've accrued so much extra XP with him that he could grow. And the next thing is the limitless package. This one is really good chance to increase a random skill cap when leveling up. So basically let's say Durham only had that one skill cap that bothered me or my wider or my quarterback had only one skill cap that bothered me. Like his throw power was a skill cap. When up, when he upgrades, there's a chance that that skill cap could be broken and you can increase it, which means that now he has a maximum skill cap. So the limitless is a good way to make sure that you actually increase the potential and stealing of your players. Similar situation as before, I probably recommend doing it on O-line, secondary, linebackers, positions that can impact a lot of people. That way, let's say you have a few linebackers that are capping at around 88, 89, this limitless might get them to 90. It gives them that little extra nudge on their ceiling. And then if you look on down, there's a few more. Can't stop, won't stop, earn extra XP bonus for every three game win streak. Then there's put a ring on it, chance to increase the skill cap with a conference or national title. Those are a lot harder to get. But again, if you're a guy that's, if you're Georgia, your team that's consistently winning, that could be so useful. You're winning natties back to back conference shifts. You're just knocking out skill caps on players. So that's the last aspect. So to wrap it all up, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was helpful. Dev traits, player stat caps, overalls, XP, all separate things that work together. I feel like everyone was putting them in the same box and not really getting it. So dev traits are how quickly you can accrue XP. You combine that with those packages and you can accrue XP quicker, which will give you bigger jumps that are unrelated to the offseason training jump. Having packages that give you better offseason training jumps with better stat caps gives you the higher ceiling to improve and so on and so forth. The best style of player you can get is an elite player with a high starting overall, that has no stat caps. So let's say you have a quarterback that's 78 overall. They have almost no stat caps. They're an elite dev player. Start him, play him. That guy will be a high 90. No, no doubt in my mind. The worst thing you can do is assume that a 60 overall elite guy will be a 90 because honestly, even if they get two 10, 15 point jumps, you're getting close to 80. And that's kind of where they're going to be capping out. So keep that in mind as well and start to understand why those four and five star guys are a little bit better because they start higher. It's a lot easier to get them higher because they start higher. That's pretty much it. I hope this helped you guys out. If you have any more questions, comment them down below. DM me on Twitter. You can follow me down below. I hope this video helped you guys. It took a lot of work to get this all together. So get all this info in my head, you know. So if you did, this helped you out. Make sure to drop a like on this video and make sure to subscribe to this guy if this helped you guys out. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.